If one is to consider secure communities in the context of costs, you can look at it at the federal level, and it's certainly an effective use of federal resources. It makes the immigration officers, the ICE officers, so much more efficient. It, in that context, is a tremendous taxpayer saving, but it, the second prong is that if you look to local jurisdictions, I believe that there is a huge cost benefit to them working cooperatively with ICE to remove from their communities alien offenders and to do it in a way that doesn't cycle them through the system, put them back on the street again, you know, after a long or a short period of incarceration, but effectively out of the country. One of the ironies and inconsistencies in those few jurisdictions that have chosen to be selective about what detainers they will honor and what information they will pass to ICE or allow ICE access to is that the jurisdictions speak about the cost of being involved with immigration law enforcement. And the ironies here are twofold, and the first are that it's a false argument about cost if in the long run there is a tremendous cost to the community and lives and suffering with recidivists, not to mention the multiplicity of times the same individual will be churned through the local or state criminal justice system. And the second is that many of those jurisdictions that are being selective about the detainers are collecting hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of federal dollars on the state criminal alien assistance program, including for those aliens that they do not turn over to ICE. And it seems to me that as a matter of ethics and logical consistency, either they should be fully cooperating with ICE or be honest enough to pass on those dollars.